What's up everybody? Welcome to your third tutorial of Photoshop. The last time we went over all of the basic tools. But what I didn't tell you, and we're going to be going over this time, is this little toolbar up here. Anytime you select a tool from the left hand side of the toolbar, it provides you a sub toolbar right here. And these give you any of the details of the tools you're using. So example, I selected the brush tool. It gives me all the different size of brushes and how hard it is and also the opacity and the flow of it. Also also gives me all the different types of modes. And for all of these tools, there's a little menu bar right up here display the different details of that tool and once you get the detail just how you like it you can use this button right here this little triangle if you click triangle down and then triangle to the right and select a new preset and you can save your tool call it anything you want and then click OK and it will save it for next time just how you like it so you don't have to remember exactly what options you chose. And now let's move on to the main menu bar. The main menu bar is the menu bar at the top of Photoshop. It includes file, edit, image, and all the good stuff. In file, under this you have all your basic options. You can open a new image, open one that you already saved, close save as and it has your prints as well and this other stuff we'll get into later the edit has all the stuff that you want to edit your image and this has things like undo step backward which is a lot more useful than undo or you can also use alt control z it's a lot faster way of doing undo it has your cuts your copy your paste and it also has these right here transform which gives you all these options that you can transform your image or free transform right here if you click that as you can see our entire image is outlined and we can stretch it and shrink it we can even rotate it move it and lock it in place pressing enter so that's what the free transform tool does and all of these other edit options you can play around with if you like but the next one is image and this is a very important one to change the mode of your image to either grayscale or if you want to use a different color it's right under here the adjustments you can make to your image such as lighting and color details you can add contrast brightness or add saturation and you can also adjust the image size which is the image itself or the canvas size to give you more room to work with another useful thing you can do is rotate the canvas any way you want or you can also trim your image if you have any leftover space and you want to crop it down now the rest of these we'll go over later because they won't do much good in me explaining them now because they're used for things that we didn't quite cover yet so let's move on to getting to know the interface a little bit more to the right side you can see that we have these things and all of these things are called palettes and as you toggle in between you can see that the info palette histogram and navigator are the three basic palettes by default that they give us. You also have these sub palettes right here. This one right here gives you all the presets if you saved any. Right here the brushes let you specify what kind of brush you would like to use when you're using when you're painting. And all of these right here, the three at the bottom, are for aligning paragraphs. Now these palettes right here, the color, the swatches, and the styles are also for defining colors. So say you want to type paint with green real quick. You would just select green and you can now have green to paint with. 
and the color is just for finicky finicking your color a little bit so say if you wanted to make green a little darker you just put the slider over it and now you can do it that way in the layers channels and pass palette we'll be talking about more later on and you can also anytime you want to move these around move them around or you can even bring them right out and anytime you want to get back to what you're doing just click window arrange I mean workspace default workspace and this will reset everything and anytime you want to see a palette that you don't see just click window and this is your list of palettes all along here the check ones are the one that we have open right now by default and you can also open the other ones as too so let's say you wanted to open the actions palette just click that and you now have your actions palettes open so now that we got to know the interface in the next section we'll actually start learning some stuff that we can actually do with Photoshop and get in the real fun stuff and if you're not already there you can go to www.thenewboston.com to go over everything I went over today and I'll give you step-by-step -step instructions thanks